Now a special CBS News investigation into a possible threat to your health, antibiotics. If you're saying, wait a minute, antibiotics are good, they kill bacteria and save lives, you're right. What you may not know is that for the past 60 years, they've also been given to perfectly healthy farm animals to promote growth and prevent disease. But now the Food and Drug Administration is saying that has to stop because the overuse of antibiotics in animals is leading to the creation of new strains of drug-resistant bacteria that could make humans sick. It's scary. I mean, you just can't describe it, really. Two years ago, 46-year-old Bill Reeves, who worked at a poultry processing plant in Batesville, Arkansas, developed a lump under his right eye. It went from about the size of, of a mosquito bite to about the size of a grapefruit. Doctors tried several drugs that usually work on this potentially deadly infection, methicillin-resistant staph or MRSA, before one saved his life. You go from just a regular day to knowing you may die in, in a couple of hours. He wasn't the only worker from this farming community to get sick. Joyce Long worked at the hatchery, handling eggs and chicks. She got MRSA at least a dozen times and had to try several drugs as well. It was real painful. Uh, shots don't help because it's so infected, it don't help much. I had it uh, at least 12 times. I probably get them at least three times a month. It makes you feel like a leper. Within weeks, 37 people at the hatchery got sick. They filed personal injury claims against the company Pilgrim's Pride, which has no comment. This is not an isolated incident, and chickens aren't the only concern. A University of Iowa study last year found a new strain of MRSA in almost three-quarters of the hogs and nearly two-thirds of the workers on several farms in Iowa and western Illinois. All of them routinely use antibiotics. On several farms that do not use antibiotics, no MRSA was found. Public health officials are concerned if workers who handle animals are getting sick, what about the rest of us? Drug-resistant infections have skyrocketed over the past two decades, killing an estimated 70,000 Americans last year alone. It's an emerging health crisis that scientists say is caused not only by the overuse of antibiotics in humans, but in livestock as well. Antibiotics fed to healthy animals to promote growth and prevent disease. My fear is uh, that one of these days we are going to have an organism that's resistant to everything that we know and will be left powerless. Thomas Cummins is Batesville's chief medical officer. There are a lot of concerns about uh, antibiotics being added to animal feeds that may be contributing to MRSA as well as other antibiotic resistance. Uh, and, and certainly the more bacteria exposed to antibiotics in any shape or form, the more tendency there is for resistance. There are different types of drug-resistant bacteria. Some, like E. coli and salmonella, can be passed on to people by consuming undercooked meat and poultry. Now scientists are worried that Americans may be acquiring drug-resistant MRSA not from eating, but from handling tainted meat from animals that were given antibiotics. Evidence of MRSA has been found in the nation's meat supply, but it's unclear how widespread it may be because only a small fraction is tested for MRSA. Shelley Hearn has studied the health effects of factory farming for 25 years. How does this go from the farm to the meat counter to having an adverse effect on humans? If a bacteria becomes resistant to antibiotics, it can actually spread in many ways. It could be through the food supply, but it also can be in waters that got contaminated from runoff in a farm. It could be in the air. It can happen very quickly in many different ways. It's why it's a practice that has to stop on the farm. That practice occurs inside factory farms like this, where antibiotics help animals absorb and process food so they grow bigger, faster a selling point pushed by the pharmaceutical industry. And because animals are packed into confinement pens, antibiotics are also used to keep disease from spreading like wildfire. Liz Wagstrom is a veterinarian with the National Pork Board. Some people say giving animals antibiotics to prevent illness or to promote growth is like putting antibiotics 
in a child's cereal. You know, save them so they'll work when they're really needed. I'd say that we, we do strategically place them. It's not an all day, every day, um, every pig gets antibiotics every day of its life. So you don't think they're being overused by farmers anywhere in this country? The vast majority of producers use them appropriately. But drug distributors and dozens of farm workers in four Farm Belt states told us antibiotic use to promote growth and prevent disease is widespread on factory farms. They administer drugs just, you know, constantly, constantly, constantly. That's their fix-all for everything. Former hog worker Kim Howland took us inside this factory farm in Oklahoma, where she worked two years ago. She says drugs like Tylen, Keflex, and Batrol, the same classes used to treat everything from skin to respiratory infections in humans, were given regularly to pigs who were not sick. Her husband contracted MRSA and almost died. My conclusion was that I had carried it home. This is where the pigs are finished at. Before they're sold? Yes. Dave Kronlagi of Dyersville, Iowa, says he uses uh -huh. antibiotics to accelerate growth and fend off disease, but says he does so responsibly. And you never worry about giving them antibiotics and having them develop bacterial disease that may be sort of a super bug for these animals? No, no. How do you prevent that from happening? Well, we don't always use the same antibiotics for one thing. Antibiotics, he says, keep the cost of meat at the supermarket lower and his profits higher. Why do you think antibiotics are so necessary for your bottom line? Well, because the bottom line is how healthy you keep those pigs. And the healthier those pigs are, uh, the bottom line looks better. But the bottom line on antibiotic use in factory farming is this. No one is really monitoring it. Joshua Sharfstein is the deputy director of the FDA. We want to put in place measures to reduce inappropriate use, and we want to see that those are working. In order to do that, we have to have a good surveillance system, and there's no question that that needs to be improved. I love hog farming, and I miss it. I wish I'd go back, but until the walls come down, the roofs come off, there's no chance. Now, you probably want to know if the meat you're buying is antibiotic-free. You can just check the label. It will say so. Tonight, we continue our investigation into the use of antibiotics in healthy livestock. Public health officials say it's high time we pay attention because using them to promote growth and prevent disease in animals could have devastating consequences to our health in the future. That's because a steady diet of these drugs can make bacteria morph into strains that are antibiotic resistant. And these so-called superbugs could pose a serious threat to humans. American farmers give their animals more antibiotics than any other country in the world. But some farmers here and overseas are finding another way. They call it the Danish experiment, a source of pride for the country's 17,000 farmers. The food uh, consists of uh, wheat, uh, barley, and oat. Uh, soil and a mineral mix and no antibiotics here. Unlike industrial farms in the U.S. which use antibiotics to promote growth and prevent disease, Danish farmers use antibiotics sparingly, only when animals are sick. The experiment to stop widespread use of antibiotics was launched 12 years ago when European studies showed a link between animals who were consuming antibiotic feed every day and people developing antibiotic-resistant infections from handling or eating that meat. We don't want to use more medicine than needed. And a lot of the medicine that is given is not needed. 35-year-old Soren Helmer is a second-generation pig farmer whose sows produce more than 30,000 pigs a year. When the ban started, he and his father thought the industry would suffer. We thought we could not produce pigs as efficient as we did before. But that has proven wrong. In fact, since the ban, the Danish pork industry has grown by 43 percent, making it one of the top exporters of pork in the world. All of Europe followed suit in 2006, but the American pork industry doesn't want to. What we've seen in Denmark and other countries is that they actually have had some increases in cost of what it takes to produce a pig. And so it's not that um, 
unqualified success. If we did the same thing in the United States, we'd have more sick and dying pigs, and none of that would result in a benefit to the U.S. consumer. Without using growth-promoting antibiotics, it costs only $5 more for every 100 pounds of pork brought to market in the U.S. That's a small price for public health, says Dr. Ellen Silbergeld, who's been studying the antibiotic resistance link between livestock and people for the past decade. I think the Danish and European experience indicate that there will be real and measurable public health benefits. There will be improvements in food safety and actually in the prevalence of drug-resistant infections in people. According to one study, when different countries introduced certain antibiotics on farms, a surge occurred in people contracting antibiotic-resistant intestinal infections one to two years later. One, Campylobacter, increased 20% in Denmark and 70% in Spain. After the ban, a Danish study confirmed that removing antibiotics from farms drastically reduced antibiotic-resistant bacteria in animals and food. Danish scientists believe if the U.S. doesn't stop pumping its farm animals with antibiotics, drug-resistant diseases in people will only spread. It's not going to be a time bomb that goes out, off like this. It's something that slowly will, you know, make it more and more complicated and more and more difficult for us to treat infections, bacterial infections. Some American food producers agree. It's just gone too far. Stephen McDonnell is the CEO of the American food company, Applegate Farms. What most bothers you about the way industrial farmers in this country currently operate? We use too many antibiotics. We use too many growth promotants. The singular focus is to create cheap meat. And that's not always the best thing for the health of the Americans who buy it. And so we think with some subtle changes, giving them more space, feeding them a good diet, and not stressing them out by growing them too quickly, you don't even need to use antibiotics. McDonnell helps farmers like Dwayne Cook kick the habit. How long have you been raising turkeys, Dwayne, without using antibiotics? So we started growing them without antibiotics roughly uh, 14 years ago. Wow, for yeah. a long time then. Yeah, we were one of the first ones. Does know. it make you feel better doing oh, yeah. it this and, way? And Yeah, because really, from using the antibiotics for so long, a lot of them really didn't work well anyway anymore. Today, his 18 poultry farms scattered throughout Pennsylvania are more profitable than when he used antibiotics. Wow, a lot of turkeys. A lot of turkeys. Cook says it costs very little to convert a farm to antibiotic-free, and it doesn't cost consumers much more either. People buying antibiotic-free turkey thigh meat will spend around $1.40 per pound versus $1.20 for conventionally raised birds. Cook says higher quality feed and better living conditions make his birds naturally healthier. And what's the importance of giving them more space? That's our natural growth promoter. I mean, by giving them more space, we can get weights that are really close to what they're getting with the growth promoter. Because farmers are raising livestock successfully without growth promoting antibiotics, from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, to outside Copenhagen, <laughs> public health officials in this country say this is an idea whose time has come. We have identified here that we're talking about a public health issue, that the overuse of antibiotics on farms does pose a risk to human health. The FDA has for the first time come out against using certain antibiotics to promote growth in livestock, and pending legislation in Congress would ban some types of antibiotics used to treat humans, from being administered to healthy farm animals. You can find more information posted on our website at cbsnews.com.